I'm Edie Lash, and I'm here inside the Hub Culture Studio. It is 2022, and it's Davos. What do you think about Davos in the summer? Uh, I think it's great. It's certainly hot. You know, that's uh, <laughs> that's a big change, here. indeed. indeed exactly. You know, so that that is a big change. So, Professor Francesco Veloso, Dean of Imperial College's Business School. If we've learned one thing from the pandemic, it's that um, education is possible online, but it is a challenge for many online. I wonder what your, first of all, your reflections are as we come out of the pandemic, at least in, in parts of the world, on the role of education and how it might need to change. So I think that at the same time, as you said, big challenges, but also it became um, as more needed than, than ever, education. Mm -hmm. But it is changing. Uh, for example, one of the things that we've decided at Imperial College Business School is that education for us is going to be hybrid because the world's going to be hybrid. Whatever we think about it, some people love it, some people loathe it, but it's part of our lives. And so we believe that if we're training future managers, it needs to be part of their lives as well. Mm -hmm. So we've embedded that. And that's, of course, there's technology elements to it. But it's also a very important part of how do you think about education in this cyber environment? What, what do you do physically? What do you do completely online? What do you do in a mixed way? And that is going to be a very important part of the evolution of how we think about delivering education in a post-pandemic uh, world. And um, we feel that uh, we're at the cutting edge of that. I mean, we're already on the digital side, many mm -hmm. successful programs. And by embracing this head on, we want to continue to be at the forefront of this change. A lot of discussion around how lifelong learning is the way of the future. We can't go just to the, the four years of university, four or five years of university. We can't just do a two year business school course, but it has to be something that you come back to over and over again. How do you encourage people to be able to dip in and out throughout their career? How do you make that something that you can do while you're running a busy company? So I think that there's probably two or three elements that I think are quite important there. One is to create that habit from the beginning. So one of the things that we're doing now for our MBAs is to tell them that for the three or four years after they graduate, they can come back and do one or two electives over the summer to get that habit of keeping connected to the school, but keeping connected to complement the knowledge that they have. So there is you know, initiatives and ideas to start to get people you know, comfortable with that idea from the beginning. And this is one right. example. Is that working? Yeah, it's working. You know, I'm, I'm going to teach a class now this summer. I have half of my students that are enrolled are people that are actually alums now mm -hmm. that want to go back that because of the pandemic and the fact that they can connect digitally, it makes them accessible to them. So that, that that's one aspect. The other aspect is to realize that one of the things that we already knew from digital education is also going to be part of the hybrid any way you think about it is to think about education much more of bit-sized chunks of knowledge. So I think we tended to think about knowledge as a big thing or a whole course of a whole program. Even within a course now, we have 10 or 12 learning moments that are part of that. So once you start to think about learning that way and you start to think and design the courses in that way, then you can pace yourself on the way that you evolve and that makes it much more comfortable for somebody that's very busy with families, with job, to go back to that education and to evolve. And some of those things are gonna be digital over a computer. And then from time to time, you're gonna go back to the school to meet people personally, to participate in a big event, to have a social dimension. And that is going to be this orchestration and this production is gonna be part of education as much as thinking about the content. And, and it's already present with us. It's gonna be part of the future of education for sure. You mentioned uh, hybrid is already important. How do you look at inclusion? Because uh, we do have most of the world, uh, the future is young and the future is not in uh, the rich northern countries. Exactly. How do you extend what you're doing to people who could absolutely use the skills in lower and middle income countries? So uh, I think that's absolutely critical that you mentioned that. And there's different elements of, of inclusion. So for example, the fact that we decided to keep the MBA hybrids, we've heard from you know, mothers to say, it is great to know that if my child is not well, I can stay home, take care of the child and still participate in a class well, that I could not that, do. Yeah. And that's true for fathers yeah. uh, uh, as well. But it's about those that tended to be less represented because of that um, historically. That's one example of how this can make a difference. The other one is exactly the fact that our global online MBA that we launched pre-pandemic, it's already five, six years old, 
has the greatest representation of students from Africa, for mm. example. Uh, and so it is true that when you make it more accessible, even from the point of view of connecting, it enlarges a bigger population. Now, the next stage, which is, I think, also implied in your question, is the price point. Because one of the things that we need to realize is that the price points, certainly of a leading business school, makes it very difficult to distribute to a wider population. So the important reflection that we all have to do is, how do we recombine some of the tools and the instruments that we develop as part of this effort to have a more, more digital education to perhaps enter with certain offerings that have a different price point that therefore allow a much broader population to participate that then perhaps if they want to come to campus, do other things, they will then have to step up in terms of the type of uh, offering that they subscribe. But I really feel that that combination is a very important part of, of, uh, of our future to try to you know, connect to that, broader, to that broader environment. Thank you so much for joining us here in the Hub Culture studio, uh, Dr. Veloso. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to hearing about how that particular program uh, develops. For now, uh, thank you. And I'm Edie Lush. Thank you.